In this video, we are going to go over the basic simple steps of charging and caring for your RC LiPo batteries. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me doing bashing and crawling and drifting and racing, plus product review videos and how to's. And one of the basic things that you see a lot and a lot of questions out there about in this RC space is how do I charge my LiPo batteries and what's the appropriate settings and what do I do with that? So today I'm going to go over a few simple steps to get you started at the very base level of charging a LiPo battery. The good news today is what I'm going to show you, it applies true whether you're talking about charging a super small little 2S LiPo like this one from Ovonic, a 3S, 4S, bigger packs all the way up, no matter what it is, the basic rules and steps you're going to go through are going to be the same for all batteries. The first step is making sure that you have selected an appropriate charger that has both balanced charge capability and storage charge capability. If you don't have this and you don't have a charger that really can read out appropriately, then I have a link down below in the video description to a few chargers, including this one right here, that I believe are very good value for the money good chargers for folks to get into the hobby with in reality I only ever use two different charging methods on my charger and like I said it's balanced charging so I use that for whenever I want to fully charge a battery before going out and running it and then there's gonna be storage charging which is what I do to a battery every time when I'm done running it and I'm not gonna use it again within 24 hours all right if I'm not using that battery in 24 hours it goes back to storage charge that's gonna help both with safety and longevity of your life of batteries your charger will typically have multiple different types of charging that it can go through you have to make sure that you're selecting the right style of battery so these are lip lipo batteries and so we are in lipo and then as you go through it you can see that there's a discharge there's regular charging which does not balance the cells there's balanced charging which is what we want and then there's storage charging all right as you look at this we're gonna um, preparing to go out and drive later today so I have the balance plug plugged into the balance port and I have the main wire plugged into the main leads you have to connect both on a lipo battery in order for it to charge appropriately this charger automatically senses that this is indeed a 4s lipo battery now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to confirm that it's 4s and you're going to want to set the total capacity to match what is on the battery itself and then you're going to be looking at the charge rate over here so typically your battery when you purchase it will come with instructions that says what c rating you can charge it at now i typically only ever charge my batteries at one c or maybe even actually less than one c so in an example right here with a 6500 milliamp battery a one c charge rating would be 6.5 amps and you can see that's exactly what my charger immediately went to now i have the ability over here to actually adjust it. This charger will go up to 10 amps. So I could charge it at a higher rate like that. The higher amperage that you charge a battery at, the faster it will charge. But you may also have you run the risk of damaging your battery. A slow charge is not a bad charge for a battery. So I will typically charge again at that 1C charge rate or like I said, maybe even lower. A lot of the times what I do is I leave these chargers set at something like a 5 amp charge or a 4 amp charge and then I do not actually modify it battery to battery it's not that specific once you have all those metrics where you want them as an example I just put this one at five um, you're gonna go ahead and start the charge it checks to confirm that it is in fact a four cell battery and that we're confirming that it's a four cell battery and then we're gonna start it for charging now one of the things that you will want to see fan is kicked on to keep the charger cool you can see that it's coming up to that five amps to charge you see it has a timing counter a voltage total counter and a milliamp hour that it's putting into capacity that it's putting into the battery honestly I don't really worry about any of that stuff except to confirm that the amperage is right and then in these chargers you can actually see the individual cell voltage this is a really good thing for you to watch and monitor as your battery charges this is the first sign that you will get that something may be wrong with the battery. When you plug it in, are all the cells roughly the same? Honestly, I have batteries where the cells are 0 0.1, 0 0.2 voltage apart. That doesn't really bother me. 
What, what I really look for is when it charges, do they all tend to come up the same? When it gets to a maximum of 4.2 volts, which for your standard LiPo battery, each one of the cells will get to 4.2 volts. When that happens, are all of them hitting it at roughly the same time? When you really get into trouble is when you see one of the cells uh, takes a long time to get to that 4.2 volts. It tells you that you're starting to have a issue inside your battery. Now what we're gonna act like is if we have just come back in from bashing and we need to put this battery back to storage voltage. So whether your battery is discharged and is dead or it is, you know, it should be at maybe 3.3 volts per cell, maybe a little bit higher, whether it's at that or it's even, as we know, just charged this up a little bit, the voltage is higher, it's at 3.9 something, your storage setting on your charger will always bring that back to that 3.85 volts per cell, which is what storage charge is and is the safe way to doing it. So again, I just came back and selected storage charge. Again, it recognizes a 4S LiPo. Again, the milliamp hour, you'll get it to match or be close enough to what you have on your battery. And again, you'll be charging at your recommended rate from the battery or lower. Lower does not hurt. So again, here I'm actually lower. I'm at five instead of at 6.5. And now when I start this charge, you can see it actually says it's on storage instead of balanced charge. Still recognizes that it's a 4 amp battery, 4S battery. But what you're gonna be seeing is it's gonna be bringing the voltage of all those cells back down at this point to 3.85 volts per cell. If the battery was discharged below that, then it would be bringing it up to 3.85 cells uh, volts per cell. That's it folks, it really truly is just that simple. If you are getting ready to go out and drive your RC within the next 24 hours, put the battery on balanced charge. Uh, if not, make sure that all the cells come up equally and it takes care of that battery, makes everything equal. You don't overcharge any individual cells. If you are done driving and you're not gonna drive again in the next 24 hours, then you put it on storage charge. No matter whether it is still at a higher um, charge rate or a lower charge rate, put it back at storage charge. And that will help maintain the safety and reliability, overall durability, longevity of your LiPo battery. It's really, really just that simple. And as you plug it in, as far assuming you have an appropriate charger, which again, I'm gonna have some links to appropriate chargers down below in the video description. As long as you have that, it'll recognize your cell count or you can set your cell count very easily and you can monitor and watch those individual voltages as that battery charges or goes to storage charge. So it really isn't as complicated as some people may make it out to be. And a final note about safety on this. You will see that I have all of my LiPos in this handy dandy metal storage case charging right here in my garage. Frequently, if I have any battery that I have any kind of concern about, I will be always charging it in a LiPo safe fireproof bag. These will not keep the LiPo, of course, from catching on fire if there is any kind of issue with the battery, but it will help contain it so that it does not spread around your house. Um, it, please be careful with LiPos. Please monitor their health. You will see issues where LiPos are damaged, swollen. Like I said, you can see sometimes on the charger if one cell isn't balanced appropriately. Those are the things that you're looking out for to make sure that maybe there is an issue with that battery as you go to charge it. Batteries, as it turns out, aren't cheap, especially if you go for like the big 4S and 6S packs, but they are a lot cheaper than rebuilding part of your house and replacing some of your property. So if you have any LiPo that has anything that you are concerned about, dispose of it and dispose of it properly and be done with it. So I actually have a video of how, if you are going to be discharging and disposing of an RC LiPo, one of the common ways that you do that is actually an assault bath test. And if you wanna know anything more about that, I have a video right over here where I tested that whole method and show you how I did it. So you can go right over there and check that out. We'll see you in that video. Thank you and goodbye.